Hi everybody. It's been a long time um, since I've just kind of sat down and had a little chat with you all. You may hear some background driving sounds, planes, snow, maybe not snow, <laughs> uh, cars, people yelling, maybe. I don't know. Not right now, but it might happen. Um, I'll probably cut that out, but uh, you can tell I'm in a different setting. Uh, I am back at my apartment. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't know if you guys have ever actually seen this space. I think when I announced that I'd be going away because I was moving off my first full-time job, I don't know if I ever showed you anything. So, at some point probably be showing you my apartment in more detail, maybe a tour, maybe another plant video, who knows. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a bit of an update. Um, and unfortunately for ASMR purposes, my nails are kind of uh, a mess because uh, I work at a tool company. I, I'm a marketer, but I, I work at a tool company, and occasionally that means I need to be doing heavy lifting, working on machinery, putting things together, and that just tends to make these bad boys break a little bit more often. So unfortunately, I only have a couple good nails for tapping on things. But that does not hinder me from doing ASMR. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, hold on, let me grab my coffee. To be honest with you all, I feel like I'm at this point in life where I'm just exhausted all the time. And that comes with starting a full-time job. Recording. Yes, we are good to go. Um, but yeah, I'm just exhausted. Um, I don't know. I kind of have started to realize, like, I hate the standards that we have, that we grow up believing and following, and it's not even that those standards are necessarily bad. It's good to want to be successful and it's good to get a full-time job if that's what you know you feel you need to do um, but I think sometimes it's the other stuff the kind of unspoken things that people don't always talk about that are seen as like bad or like a step back in society uh, that I don't think should be um, like, I don't really want to talk a lot about religion or politics on this channel at all, uh, but some of you may know that I'm religious, and for me, I've, as my faith has grown, I guess, over the years, there's been this part of me that's like, why uh, would it be necessarily a bad thing for me to use my skills in maybe a religious setting, like work? get a job in a religious type of setting, like a church. Um, I think sometimes that's perceived as like a low position or a bad thing, but if I'm somebody with faith, that should be regarded as like the highest opportunity that I could have, because I get to work in a situation that uses faith every day. Um, and I come from, I don't, I don't know, we won't get into that, but I think standards like that, where we shouldn't look down on people for, for one, wanting to do something that they're passionate about, but also I don't think it should be a bad thing to, maybe you're a college student and you can't find a full-time job in a first year or two years, maybe it's more. Um, I don't think we should be upset with that person 
Because, for one, so many people, especially now, are trying to find jobs and can't. And it's not their fault. It's just, there's so much going on. Businesses are taking longer uh, to get to people because they have a lot going on. They have less people working. Um, it's just a lot. And I don't want to be a downer, so I won't talk anymore about that. But that's something that's been on my mind a lot. And I think that's also why I am somewhat exhausted um, and yeah on a last note with COVID um, moving away even not too far from family during COVID to a place that I have never lived uh, and don't have friends in it's also emotionally exhausting because I'm trying to put myself out there and meet people and that's hard and in a way I get it because if you're in a group setting and you're already best friends with everybody and some new person comes along you know you're, you're probably going to try to you know befriend them but your most of your attention might be on the friends you already have because you're used to that setting so i get it in an instance where if i'm new and i'm in a group setting people don't necessarily want to talk to me before talking to some of their already close friends so i get that it's kind of Um, yeah, I, I'm just using this camera again, as you may have noticed, um, and I have the test footage stuff that I recorded for my India Stoker video, which, um, I still am planning to make. I know the brown wig that I have is okay, but the part is just so bad and I would love to be able to get something that looks a bit more India and real, so that may be in the works and I'm kind of at a spot in life now where I'm lucky enough to have a full-time job um, and I kind of feel like I can spend that money. Uh, this is just making me think of those expectations again, it's like ingrained in me to say I'm lucky enough to be at this position which that's true, but I don't think we should always be like, anytime you're in that situation, you should count yourself as lucky because so many people want to be in that situation because it can still be miserable. I'm not miserable. I shouldn't say that. Um, but yeah, expectations. Um, anyway, you may have noticed the lovely plant in the background. George. George is a monstera plant. Just a moment. Hold oh, bear with me. So this book is called Leaf Supply. You may hear the children outside. to me a long time ago. I believe it was a birthday gift. And I was so excited. Because I love plants. Even if I kill them a lot, I still love them. My goal is to learn not to kill them. That's what I'm working on. Um, but the Monstera plant is one that I have wanted for so long. Uh, because I hear it does really well in indoor settings. Especially like it can be acclimated to direct, direct sunlight, um, and it can also do well in just bright light, but it's not like direct, so I kind of like that. Let me find the page that it's on. Um, so I should say that it's 
the monstera plant, but it's also called the Swiss cheese plant. And you probably can't really tell on my plant so far, but it does have uh, some holes in the leaves, um, and that's how the plant actually grows in some spots. I don't know a lot about plants yet, I'm still learning, uh, but that's how the plant is designed. Um, it's just really interesting. I just love the big leaves. I would love to get a rubber plant. I think that's what it's called. Those are also uh, leafy large plants. I just love uh, those to fill a space because I'd rather have, I think, several large plants than a million small ones because then you gotta relocate a ton of stuff instead of one or two things. Less clutter, you know? Something that I really love about this book is that it goes through so much. Uh, it goes through a ton of different types of plants that you can learn about and buy and incorporate into your spaces. Um, it talks about uh, what you need to be concerned about as a new plant owner, like pests and soil acidity levels and drainage levels, what kind of soil to buy, what kind of pots you can get, or planters, uh, what those materials will do, etc. And it also shows uh, some different people and their plants uh, and their living space and what that looks like, and that's been a really fun thing for me. Uh, I just think it's super cool to see how different people are living in uh, their home jungles, their jungalos, as some have called them. Uh, but yeah, I'm very sad because, so, quick backstory, um, my job, we went remote not too long ago, like completely remote, and we're starting to ease back into things, but when that first remote session happened, I went back home to Michigan and worked remotely from home with family, but I did not take some of my plants from here home. So I have a spider plant, or had a spider plant that was given to me by a good friend who uh, I love very much. And uh, I was very excited because those plants you can propagate. Uh, they grow little baby versions of itself and then you can replant those. And the one she had given me, um, it was a baby, but you put it in water uh, to propagate. And, or like it was a baby that was growing in water and it was fairly large but when I got back it was dead so I will need to be getting a new one uh, I just feel so bad that I let that happen but I also didn't know how to bring a bunch of plants home without killing them on the way there or crushing them with luggage <laughs> so yeah that was a little bit of my plant book I do plan to post here some more. Uh, again, I kind of explained I've been a bit exhausted physically, but also emotionally. And uh, when you're in that state, I don't want to act like I know everything about it, but uh, when you're depressed or when you're just exhausted, you don't have the energy to do a lot. Uh, and I really want to provide you guys with really good quality content. And when I'm in this mood. It's hard for me to put in that effort um, or to record all that I need to record. So, stuff is coming. Plans are still in place, but it just may be a little bit longer. And I apologize. So, uh, yeah, this was just a ramble video update. Why not? Um, would love to make just trigger videos. Those are harder for me to make because I just feel stupid when I'm making them. <laughs> like I don't feel like I follow. Like I get, I wa I've watched, I've listened to trigger videos before. Not as much as other, excuse me, the other content. Um, but if 
there are certain triggers you guys would like videos on, please let me know. And I would love to make them for you. Even if I am still new to making that sort of content. Hopefully this audio is okay. Again, I'm using my new mic. Um, and hopefully the camera did not die. So we'll find out. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I've missed you all. Hope you're all doing really well. And I will see you in my next video. Well, all you lovely, lovely souls.